So now in this video, we look at why I've been looking, or doing videos I should say, on the seven segment display. So I have this integrated circuit here, which is the 4026, 4000 series CMOS logic integrated circuit. As you can see, there's a number of them. This one is the 26, right there. And it is a decade counter. And so, all of these resistors here, they're powering one of the LEDs when the output is high, right there. So, we have here the clock input. Normally, you would have a digital clock. A signal going high about 5 volts because we're using 5 volts you don't have to use 5 volts you can use a wide range of voltage with this integrated circuit but I'm using 5 volts high signal would be about 5 volts and low signal about 0 volts so we have the trim pot turned all the way to the negative rail let's go up about halfway you see that the number changed to 1 and then we go back to 0 up and if you wiggle just a little bit it won't change. You got to go negative enough, but on the high signal, the number goes up. So it is pretty straightforward. As I said before, the uh, outputs where I have these resistors, they actually power the LED. We have one of the pins going to the negative rail. So after it goes through the LED, this is the common cathode. So each resistor goes to one of the anodes and they all end up at this cathode which goes to the negative rail there's also one over there I'm not sure exactly where it is but uh, in any case pretty straightforward we went over that in the last video so now we don't just wire them up and that went out because the power supply uh, got uh, turned in a way where it lost power so in any case it's kinda getting worn or something but it still works plenty fine so in any case, let's zoom in. So we have the reset pin there. We want to hold that low for uh, this circuit here. The clock signal, we're just simulating it with a trim pot. Normally we'd use a digital signal. I'm not using one of these switches because you don't usually make a distinct connection right away. It kind of bounces back and forth. So each bounce would change the clock. We don't want that and uh, so I'm not going to deal with that in this video we're just going to use the trim pot and we have a Schmidt trigger input at the clock so as I said before we don't have to worry about wiggling in one spot and it changing we have to move the trim pot quite a bit so that is nice we have to hold uh, pin 3 high for this circuit and then pin 2 low and you can look at the data sheet why but uh, that's what we have to do that's a lot more explanation in any case really simple circuit as I said we have to hold some pins high and low for various reasons we don't want to reset the integrated circuit and so we hold it low If we give a high signal it will reset and uh, there's a couple other things with these actually this one we need to keep high to see the display we can turn the display off I'll wiggle that out and uh, if I go to the negative rail it goes out and you can see that while it's floating it it's kind of indecisive and so it may stay on oops we just short circuit the power supply and I think I fried something you can see there the display does not uh, look good let's turn the power off and on and so I don't know what something glitched in the integrated circuit but we're fine we short circuited the power supply so the uh, integrated circuit just got some weird uh, uh, signal so that kind of goofed it up in any case uh, we're still good so that's good and uh, pin 2 let me look quick that is oh clock inhibit so we don't want to inhibit the clock that is why it is at the negative rail if we pop it out and put it to the positive rail then the clock won't change so er, there you can see now it's floating so it's really erratic we go to the positive rail and uh, it was at negative and now it should not count. There you can see it's not counting as I turn the uh, trim pot right there. It inhibited it. So, in any case, I think I got everything there and short circuit the power supply again. That's why you turn the power off when you are doing these things. But I'm making a video uh, for one thing. Don't want to keep turning the power off. And 
if I make a goof like that. I accidentally did it the second time. Well, I accidentally did it both times. But uh, if I goof like that, that's a learning experience too. And so it's better you watch me make that mistake than uh, to make it yourself. But in any case, turn the power off when you are making the electrical changes to your circuit. It does not want to go into that spot. And uh, there we go. We got it in there. Now we turn the power on. And it looks like it held the number, so it didn't clear out when we turned it off. That's kind of interesting. So, in any case, hopefully you found that all interesting. As I said before, it really easy circuit to wire up. You just have to go to the data sheet, and uh, again, the power supply came loose, and look at the uh, pin. So remember, we have eight on display right now. So the top one is A, then you go to the right. B, C, D, E, F, and then G. And so I use the diode tester, so we have the COM in there, and then I touch the red probe to the pins, and when I got to uh, the top one there, A, I just looked on the data sheet for which pin number A is. So I put a resistor from that pin number, and I can't remember exactly which one it is, but I put a resistor to that pin, and then used a jumper if the resistor could not reach by itself. It, it wasn't too bad. It's a bit confusing, but I worked through it, and uh, once I uh, got down what I needed to do, then it became really easy. It's not too complex. I spent about an hour on this circuit, so hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.